Welcome to Statics. Area Moment of Inertia The area moment of inertia, given the symbol uppercase I, is a geometric property of a shape, similar to the area of a shape. It is usually used when analyzing the cross-section of a structural member. The area moment of inertia represents the relative capacity of a cross-section to resist bending. Like area, it is based only on section geometry and not on material properties. Area moment of inertia is not the same thing as mass moment of inertia. In this course, we will only consider area moment of inertia, so from here on, I will call it simply moment of inertia. Mass moment of inertia will be a topic for a future dynamics course. The moment of inertia is sometimes referred to as the second moment of area. That is because it is approximately equal to the area times a distance squared. Unlike area, moment of inertia is tough to visualize and can therefore be a little mysterious to students encountering it for the first time. However, you probably have some intuition on the effects of moment of inertia. You just may not realize what it is. Let me give you an example of where you encounter moment of inertia in reality. Suppose you have a ruler like the one shown, and you want to bend it by holding it in two hands and rotating both ends, effectively applying two concentrated moments. Two primary options for bending the ruler are shown. Which is the easiest way to bend it? You know, based on experience, that it is much, much easier to bend the ruler when it is oriented as shown in the top picture than in the bottom picture. What is different? The length, the material, the cross-sectional area is the same in both orientations. What changes is the moment of inertia. I previously mentioned that moment of inertia is a measure of the resistance of a cross-section to bending. When calculating bending stress or bending deformations using equations that will be taught to you in your future mechanics of materials course, the moment of inertia appears in the denominator of those equations. So the bigger the moment of inertia, the lower the bending stress and the lower the bending deformation. So as moment of inertia gets bigger, the resistance to bending increases. The orientation of the ruler at the top, relative to the bending direction, has a small moment of inertia, while the orientation at the bottom, relative to the bending direction, has a much larger moment of inertia. Let's see how to calculate it, and then compare the difference. If I cut through the ruler, with the cut perpendicular to its length, I see that the ruler has a rectangular cross-section. For simple shapes, like rectangles, you can find equations for calculating the moment of inertia in engineering reference tables. The moment of inertia of a rectangle is 1 divided by 12 times the base dimension times the height dimension cubed. Note the subscripts on I. The x means that this is the moment of inertia about the x-axis shown. The c stands for centroid. This means that the x-axis passes through the centroid. So this moment of inertia equation is for the moment of inertia about the centroidal axis in the x-direction. Now, like cross-sectional area, the only variables are base and height. Unlike area, it matters which dimension is the base and which is the height, since the height gets cubed. Here is a rule. The base or the variable that is not cubed, is always parallel to the axis you are finding the moment about, in this case, the x-axis. That means that the variable that gets cubed, here the h, is perpendicular to the axis you are finding the moment about. Let's look at how changing the direction of the axis changes the value of the moment of inertia. Let's go back to the ruler. When I bend the ruler the easy way, the axis is parallel to the long dimension of the cross-section. So the base, which is parallel to the axis direction, is 2 inches. And the height, which gets cubed, is 0.1 inches. The moment of inertia 
is 0 0.1667 times 10 to the negative 3. Look at the units, inches to the fourth power. What does inches to the fourth power mean? Nothing, it is just the units of I. That is what makes it tough to visualize. Let's now look at bending the ruler the hard way. The axis is perpendicular to the long dimension of the cross section. So when calculating the moment of inertia, the base, which is parallel to the axis, is now 0 0.1 inches, and the height, which gets cubed, is 2 inches. We get a moment of inertia of 66.67 times 10 to the negative 3. That is 400 times bigger than the moment of inertia about the other axis. So essentially, what we call the strong orientation has 400 times the resistance to bending relative to what we call the weak orientation. That is the impact of moment of inertia. In this class, we will be calculating moment of inertia for its own sake, but it will be a tool that you will use in future classes. So learn it now, because you will be expected to use it then. As mentioned before, equations for finding the moment of inertia about specified axes, usually the centroidal axes, can be found in engineering reference materials. The moment of inertia may also be computed about other axes. This will be discussed in a following video. Here are some examples of moment of inertia for other simple shapes. They all have the same units, some length unit to the fourth power. The rules for the base and height variables for the triangle moment of inertia are the same as previously discussed for the rectangle. Note that for the triangle and circle, these equations are for the moment of inertia about the centroidal axis in the x direction. For the semicircle, the equation is for the moment of inertia about the x-axis, which is not the centroidal axis, or the y-axis, which is a centroidal axis. Here is a table that shows moment of inertia equations for a few other simple shapes.